but I have seen that people write in the, there are loads and loads and loads of uh, random tables in that game which you like yeah <laughs> yeah is that, random tables. Is still the d6 dice ball or is that uh, I, I don't know I don't know uh, I think it's uh, somewhat similar to the other free league games but it looks pretty cool the correct application of random tables D6. It's important in a role playing game. So, Jay, have you visited this Australian guy? What's his name? Logan something? Last Gasp? Yes, Last Gasp. There's some I've been yeah, I've been following random him. shit there. I've been following him for a long time. All yeah. my uh, random, most of my random generators found on my blog are created using his tool. Yep. I've tried others, but I keep on going back to his. I okay. seem to find limits. I haven't there. There isn't a random generator online tool, and I'm glad they're there. I can't make these, but there's not a one that I haven't broken. Trying to put in, you know, there's a limit to combinations. It seems that they can handle. And with split column tables in a lot of RPG books, I can easily come up with something that generates 2 million combinations. Yeah. And these generator Java, whatever HTML tools that they're making, which are really intriguing and useful, just fucking choke to death <laughs> on something that size. And uh, so I did uh, for the holidays, um introduce a 10 year old kid to dungeons and dragons and i watched their head explode <laughs> which, which which version uh mold Bay basic ah probably the, the good, good stuff, stuff. yeah good stuff yeah a 10 year old a 10 year old mini maloney from liverpool england of all places <laughs> and her sister younger sister pearl and they, she wanted to know about Dungeons and Dragons, and I handed her the book, and I started explaining it to her. It took me about ten minutes of explaining, and that's when her head exploded. It was when the light bulb went on on her head. Uh, and we played for an hour and a half, I think. And I had him do. I had her and her sister roll up characters from the beginning. One was a cleric. One was a fighter. And then I took a. A simple module from ba the basic fantasy website I got some really simple ones yep. the, from the adventure anthology the first one golden them hills a dwarven mine with goblins in it and um, so they had no problem playing the game they loved it that's cool and so I, I gave her uh, I gave her the uh, my used copy of this old day book Classic English people from Liverpool, right? They've it's it's the family. They've moved here. The guy, the dad, has worked for me before in the misty past, doing high end tile work here in Aspen, and he wanted to come back with his family. He's got his wife and his kids living in an RV at the Buttermilk Ski Resort parking lot. Okay, is that allowed? He is such a pirate. No, of course it's not allowed. <laughs> no. <laughs> but it's, I mean, I said, you guys are, per you're perfect for like one of those English situation comedies. Yeah. You know, the Maloney's in America or something like that. It, they're such the English couple, right? I can see them. He's like, oh, it's all good. It's all good. You know, she, his wife's got the flu. Oh, you're just going to have to get on with it. And she's like, we're dying in there. The the, the blankets are frozen. There's ice on the. <laughs> no problem. It'll be fine. It'll be good. The kids are fine. I can just see when they fly back and get into Gatwick Airport. She starts just beating him, going, "Don't ever do that to me again." Uh -oh, he's going to go to California instead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's right. It is an RV. They could drive it to Arizona and get warm. But anyways, yeah, they got Dungeons and Dragons in a in a second. Um, so, Moldvay is a is a good place to start for young kids. Yeah, it's where I started. 
once upon a time. Yeah. That and the yeah. blue. Little yeah. red book. Yeah, the red and the blue book. That's what she's got. She's already ran her sister through her own adventure. Awesome. So it, be so it begins. <laughs> Well, I was hoping to see that the doctor would, I know he's at work today and he's not sure what his connection is going to be. So I guess we got to start without him and I'm comfortable doing that. And we are crossing the, we've been crossing the desert of, on the dark side of the moon and you guys arrived at that, that fungi filled crevasse yeah we fought those also known as your ex's pie hole you better have you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was a couple of others i came up with last night i don't know why when it comes when it comes opportune i'll use it again the x as a big bad evil guy But anyways, you guys got any questions for me? I'm um, thinking of doing my improvement check here. No problem. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Greater E4 plus one. Hmm. What do we need? Well, I've got first aid of 65 without the doctor here, so it's not too bad. So we might actually survive this time if anyone gets injured. Mm hmm Sing? No. I think I will try to improve my uh, stealth. Well, what do you need? The current situation is, well, the ship is yes. lost its... But you were, when you said, uh, Anders, what do you need? That wasn't game-wise. You were just talking to yourself, right? Yes. I was talking to myself. Okay. Or, no, no, I was talking to you guys. What, what skill sh I should try to improve? Oh. I chose stealth because I have a sucky stealth situation. It's a little better now. Plus three. What do you think about tracking? Your tracking's a little weak. <laughs> uh, it's good enough. Next project. It's good enough. Yeah. Okay. So we fought these yellow. Yellow men. Yeah. And yep. then we found this cave thingy. And I think we stopped just outside the cave last time, didn't we? That is correct. That is correct. Okay, so um, if we, is there something, can we see or hear or smell anything out of the ordinary here? It's all unordinary around here. <laughs> you know, you've got light storms, hollow hologram projections in the desert trying to talk to you um but i will uh the what what you do see is all sorts of fungus coat the walls and ceilings of the cavern um and a rat and a relatively hard layer of pulverized fungi about an inch to two inch thick coats the floor and it's dark and it goes i mean it's a a crevasse and it goes into darkness so those fungi but this, is, but this is you are sure um that this is the place on the map and you got this information from the hologram that you saw in the desert during the light storm that information was printed on you. Yeah, it's, <coughs> it should be a castle, a keep. 
you examined a ruined keep. I think it does. Yeah, there's a um, Maria de Trace Pistolas interpreted the symbols on the map as a key. This was supposed to be was yeah a key, but yeah. there is just this crevasse. crevasse, and then there's this in a cave entrance that you have to go down the path about. 12 feet into the crevasse and there's the cave entrance so these uh, mushrooms are they like fluorescent or anything they're Do different they colors look... different modeled earth tones with uh purple and red shot through so i will take my um, trusty short sword and poke them a little Be because i guess that we will have to walk on them right well the uh where you walk it's it's pulverized down like okay. it's been trodden on quite a bit over the years so okay. those are crushed so flat we <clears throat> so we don't have to walk on them no but the walls and ceiling um are thickly coated and it's just rock fungi yeah but the beneath the fungi is rock rock so yeah yeah solid rock yeah, so what, yeah. What you can see where from? the uh, it tapers off near the coming to at the entrance of the cave but the cave they're growing inside the cave not in, on the, in the, on the walls of the crevasse or the surrounding desert okay so is, this is, does um sorry does silas recognize any of these because he's like i know this is the moon and it's not quite local local but no no nope. nope, there's it's nothing that you would eat or you'd seen on a dinner plate or in a garden okay um holy alien Bit like the rest of the party, then. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy a nibble? No. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, I uh, guess... Um, it's, and it's dark in there? Yeah. So maybe we should uh, arrange for some light and enter. Or what do you say? Yes. What's, what's your new character's name, Kevin? Uh, well, it's Silas, but he, he, he goes by Sai to his mates, so you can call Sigh. him Silas for now. Because <laughs> he doesn't know you all. Mm -hmm. So it's it's like the guy in Duck with the, those um, those guys in the in, living in a swamp making these duck collars. <laughs> it's a guy named Cy. <laughs> I don't know. I catch that show, but I, Duck Dynasty. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'm not going to Google that, and I will look and see you on a map. Cy is cool. <laughs> well, that's definitely not me. No. <laughs> okay, so um, maybe we have a, a. I think I have a lantern, so I will try I to. We got a comment <clears throat> from uh, the good doctor. Let's see what's up with him. Apologize. Trying to connect. Um, I'm going to ask him to refresh. Ah, there he is. No yes. need to. Oh my God, he's got an animated GIF. We, I don't know if this is gonna fly. Yes, potentially. But um, we'll see how it goes. I think we might actually see his face before the end of you know end of the campaign. <laughs> I hope not. I really hope. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to go this whole time and then reveal the face. Just leave the mystery, please. <laughs> Christ have mercy. 
So you guys stuck doc the doctor in the lead. You yeah. Made him, you made him wear a bandana over his one good eye. And you're having him hold his arms out and squeezing all the fungi as he goes down the cave, yes. right? Correct. Something so, like that. <laughs> <laughs> where, where? Exactly. And you got to yell boobies as you go along. I, I, mean, I will I, have a lantern. Uh, I can take the lead. And uh, 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 a pistol. Lantern and pistol? Yes. That's just creepy. Isn't it? Yeah, sorry. I, I mean, it's even I creepier. Think that's all right, right. It's even creepier when he does that on the main screen. Yeah. <laughs> I can't I think I'm, but right um, so far I'm okay with it. <laughs> You'll know if I get annoyed because I'll I don't know what I'll do. I think he might be changing it now. He's just dropped out. It's, um, I'm assuming that I've I've been able to resupply myself from the uh, the ship then. Yes. Because I was technically a slave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So right, that's fine. In which case, mm -hmm. I do also have a uh, lantern oil. Yep. 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 Um, I'll uh, I'll copy these and oh, I'll scan these and I'll send you copies so you can have a look okay. at the character sheets. Yeah. And then go. He didn't roll those. No, never. No, no. no I, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like to know a PC's name until after the third adventure. You don't want to get too close. <laughs> it's harder when you kill them. The uh, the cavern is uh, natural shaped. Um, it narrows and widens um, anywhere from three to eight feet. Uh, and um, after thirty feet into the into the cavern, it uh, splits. There's uh, it splits to your left or continues forward. Um, <clears throat> can are there any sounds or anything given an indication of what is going on here? Light. No, the sound is muffled and deadened by the coating of fungi. When it makes the uh, cave um, where outside was cold and dry, um, it feels the air is more moist. You start to see moisture on the walls and on the fungi. Mm -hmm. I will drag up my... Uh... What's he called? Like scarf to cover the nose and mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> not, not that I suppose it will help really much, but damp it down first. I might do something. Yeah. And um, what do you say, left or right? I thought it was straight on or left. Yeah, yeah. technically it's left or straight. Yeah. So. Straight on, I think. Straight on. Yeah. Um, new guy, FNG. Roll a D6. Tell me what you get. Four. The cavern opens up into... A large cavern, though not very high overall. It's large in depth. Your beam shines across, um, and there's no perceptible uh, pa <coughs> passages out 
you'd have to go further into this cave. What is noticeable is in front of you, there's, there appears to be uh, bones. Like lots of bones. Human bones? They, they appear to be human. Human-ish? <laughs> Human-ish. No, they're, I mean, as far as you can tell. Yep. The good doctor can identify them as human bones quite readily. Yes. And they they seem a lot of them in, um, intact as well. So any equipment lying around, clothing, any? No. No. Just uh, bones. No. Maybe every uh, some odds and bits that you might find. Uh, are these intact made of bones? Fetishes? Or, in, or Go intact ahead. skeletons? Sorry, are these intact bones or intact skeletons? Intact skeletons. Ah. So they're arranged correctly. But so as speak. haphazardly. Yep. There's no rhyme nor reason. They're not orderly. It's not a burial. It's um. It's um, human bones. <clears throat> Laying on the on the on the fungi crush fungi floor, and we can't see any like chew marks or dents from weapons or anything like that. No, what you do see is that the uh, the wearing down of the fungi has a couple of particular paths in this large open area, this dark, large cavern. They, um, and the, and the paths, one goes forward. Are you guys hearing a buzz, a weird echo yes. buzz? Yeah. That's gotta be, um, okay. Oh, Mark, I can hear you. Presumably me. Oh my god, I almost saw his face. Careful. I don't know. <laughs> Careful with that. Careful with that. Um what kind of buzz is it? No, it's better. Now it's better, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I, I thought it was now. a buzz that was coming echoing from when I was speaking. I was no. hearing it come back, like it's picking up your laptop's picking up my voice. I think oh, it's the fun the... guy from Yugo. I put my yeah. earphone in. Yeah. So one uh, beaten down path going forward through the litter of bones, um, and then another path to the going to the right. Though where they go, you're not sure. <clears throat> so have we gone into the, the cavern that, that was at the, the tunnel of the crevasse? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you passed a and you passed one narrow passageway uh, cavern branch going to the left and continued straight, and now you're in a large, large cavern with skeletons on the floor. Are they human skeletons or? Yes. Yeah. Humanoid. Intact. And is it while is you're it dark examining? In there, is kind of... While you're examining them, um, uh, from out of the fungi, come about six nozzles. I mean, they have this audible click as they pop out. Um, and you guys are Duck all cover. bathed in... Um, bathed in carrying uh, light colors. Coming out of these nozzles makes you feel a bit nauseous. And then it stops. It was just uh, a light. 
Yeah, six nozzles popped out of the mushrooms in the ceiling and activated and with an audible click and bathed you all in rays of light. Went from red to blue to purple to yellow, green. Back to red. Did this for about 30 seconds and stopped. Does anybody else feel cool. violated or is it just me? Was it just one mushroom or several? It was nozzles, six nozzles, uh, like out of metal that made a click and poked there, poked out of the ceiling through the, the mushroom. Ceiling. Oh. <clears throat> and then what? Ah. <laughs> then they retracted. And you can see where you know you can see where they are. The ceilings uh, in here is about twelve feet high. You're looking at roughly twelve feet. How how far in were they? they just I mean we didn't go that far in to check out the bodies, did we? Well, I suppose we wouldn't done. Yeah. You guys had entered in. Um, 15 feet. So there were, those six were arrayed in a line perpendicular to you. Okay. Your group. You get from left to right. That's horrible. Uh, yeah. That's tragic. Uh, I, I feel. I don't know where that scratching noise is coming from. I think it's picking up something. I don't know what. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, now it stopped. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I think Mark's having problems today, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's at his workplace, I think. He's trying to. Yeah. He had to work today, so he's trying to make something go. That's obviously difficult. And probably frustrating. But <clears throat> so if I look at my buddies, do I see any difference, anything new on them after they have been bathed in this light? No. No. So nothing obvious. Um I guess we'll press on. I gave, I guess what you could also see, which uh, is the, when the light came on, it gave you some more depth of the room. Because your lantern only goes so far, right? Yep. So, to your right, um, you can see there, the it narrows a bit from being a wide space into a passageway about 20 feet wide and um and then straight ahead it continues into the 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 cavern um as wide as you can see and then to your left you see it narrows as well into a passageway that looks like it's leading out and the trails the beaten trail goes um uh, straight ahead into the or to the right if you went to the left, you'd have to be walking through relatively fresh fungi. Mm -hmm. Are the skeletons in relatively fresh fungi? Uh, no. It seems to be an area devoid of fungi, uh, curiously, in about the same circumference as the light that bathed you all. Oh. While you were looking at the skeletons. Okay. <clears throat> so if we get the prince to go for, past this line, we can, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you want to send the prince first? Uh, well, the prince, I don't mind. Either. Captain Pistolas thinks that's a shit idea. <laughs> she would. <clears throat> so Prince Anjay has an advocate in the group in the form of another advocate. <laughs> Darn. I'll cross the line. 
Zach crosses the line. Okay, fair enough. Uh, nothing. Uh, well, roll a, roll a d6. A d6. Did not have a d6 prepared. Uh, <laughs> I got a six on oh, d6. I okay. Um, nothing happens. Oh, so you're going to say that's an exploding dice. Roll again for damage. You kick some bones out of your way. And the, the cavern continues on backwards, uh, back into the dark where the lantern doesn't reach. Has anybody got any torches? Someone's got a lantern. We've kind of been going along with the assumption that the witch hunter has been carrying a lantern. Uh, lantern. Yeah. I have a lantern and a glowy stone. Okay. Do you want to guys use both? Outside of the I've got a lantern as well, but I'm, I mean, I don't want to actually have like a torch, you know, the no. round no, piece no. of wood light, light up. No. Okay. No. If you guys have lanterns, I'm going to see how well I'm the not gonna have burns. It. Okay. Just be clear. The, get the, get. the glowing targets are them, not me. I was just going <laughs> to suggest giving you the lantern so I can cover you with my rifle. But okay. <laughs> Which way are you guys going to go? It looks like you got three directions. You can go left, right, or straight. Straight There's a passageway to the left. There's a passageway yep. to the left, isn't there? Where it narrows. Yeah, and that goes through um, untrodden fungi. Okay. That's the how only. Many, uh, how many skeletons are that way? Uh, none. Okay. Sounds promising. There doesn't seem to be any skeletons beyond this this collection that you've now identified a dozen in varying uh, uh, stages of decay. Like they weren't they weren't all placed here at the same time. <clears throat> Maybe they were not deemed worthy by the light. Um, or, and there was some odd bits of when you were looking for anything belongings uh, outside the the light pool, we'll call it the imprint of the light pool. Uh, Anjay would consider them common tribal fetishes that a that a that a native would wear. No, they're not. They're not, you know, his type. They're not his thing. <clears throat> Some more okay. unhygienic native hands. Did the uh, the yellow men have any of these sort of things on them? Yes. Okay. Well, at least we know what the skeletons are now. So, straight on then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The other side of the cavern. It's about eighty feet in. To the right, passageway goes twenty feet. A uh, twenty-foot wide passageway goes right, and a narrow five-foot passageway to your northwest. I would just say that to your, yeah, your northwest, to your east. Which one's got the most traffic <laughs> we see from the uh, fungus? Yeah, to the right, going to the right. Uh, I thought it might do. But there was another one, uh, way to the right as well, wasn't it? That yeah. was another path pathway. Yep, on the, the at the. Uh, if you went back to the where you came from when you yeah. came in, first came into the cave and came to, if you went back to the light pool, yeah, and went right, there was another twenty. Yes, that's where it was. Yeah. Okay, so there's another one. Roughly going in the same direction, yeah, but 
spaced apart by about 80 feet of cavern. So should we take the most traveled one? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we take that one. Okay. Uh, you disturb hundreds of bats that are now circling around you, making their god awful little screeching noises. Uh, and this is another large cavern, and it kind of bend it bends towards the to the south. You can see shorter, uh, tighter passageways directly ahead of you to the east leading out and then to the southeast the cavern opens up markedly and the bats are making a lot of noise um are there a lot of uh, fungi here as well yes and guano yes so guano covered fungi yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. It's a nas. It's a nas. So, um, the trail that the trails that we saw in the last cavern are they go, going into this cavern as well? Yes. Yep. And it terminates towards this what could be considered the center of this cavern. Um, in another light pool, but there's nothing, there's no skeletons in this one. It's like another stain similar to the one you saw. And then, and looking up, you can see, uh, uh another line of, uh, nozzles in the ceiling. Hmm. Looks like about another, it, you can see six of them in a line. What color are they? Are they like uh, yellow metal or a dull, like gun metal? Yeah, a dull dark gray. Do they look fragile? No, they look squat and sturdy. They look like metal. They don't look fragile. Oh, I was thinking if there were very, these very thin nozzles or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> I guess we'll press deeper into this cave. Um, yeah. the, uh, the nozzles activate as you pass under them. Um, yeah, it just gives you another a nauseous feeling. Oh. Nauseous feeling again? Yep. Right. But uh, nothing untoward seems to happen. The back of the cavern is um, has a phosphorine glow from some of the fungi that illuminates that. That's just the, that's the back. It kind of turns around back to where you came from. And there's a total of three narrow passageways leading out of this cavern. Going what, what direction? They're all basically going the northeast. They're separated um, each about thirty feet of uh, thirty feet apart. Mm -hmm. And the pathway is it leading that direction, or does it stop near? It the stops. Lateral? It stops right there. 
it stops. Mm -hmm. The only other trodden area goes back the way you, uh, back to the cavern from the other lower mm -hmm. east facing passage. So should we take a chance or not? Um, is it clear which is the, the, the most well used again, or are they all about the same? <coughs> mm, yeah, they're about the same. Um, how far is it from the light pool area to the entrances or exits? Specifically, so you have two light pool areas now, right? One in the cavern yeah. you're in and the one that you first entered. Which are you yeah. referring to? The one that we're in right now. And you, yeah. you said from that area to those three exits. What's the distance? Yep. Um. One's uh, 40 feet away, almost due east. One is 50 feet away, due north. And another is 80 feet away, north, north, west of it. <clears throat> so, okay, too far. I, I have a rope. I was thinking maybe you can arrange for some rope swinging thingy, but uh, it's too far. It's just a 10 meter rope, so. That's 30 foot ish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got another 30 foot rope, so tied together, that's about 60 foot. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to use the rope for? Maybe we could suspend it from the roof or from something and either swing over the mushroom, the fungi, or uh, make like a, you could climb um, under the rope. Yeah, the... I... There's really nothing to tie to. No, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the ceiling height is not high enough. Uh, is, is this to avoid the, the, the light pool or, or the mushroom, the fungi? He doesn't want to walk through the fungi. All right, okay. Is this is this lot covered in guano again, or is it not? No, bats no this pat this cavern is big enough that the uh, the guano and the bats are north of you now. Okay. To get to this light stain, you have to walk into 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, about seventy feet into this cavern. So the guano it begins thirty feet back the way you came. I don't trust the fungi. <laughs> um, I'm more concerned about the nozzles, to be perfectly honest. You know, I, I think they're the, the primary danger here. The, I mean, do the fungi look as if they're like puffballs or something? Oh, they're There's different spirit. varieties. Yeah. Do you imagine scary. if you looked hard enough, you could find something that it was like a puffball? But most of them look like squishy fungi or hard lichen on the side of a tree. <clears throat> Except those unnerving veins of red and purple. Okay. So you have succeeded, Jay. You have made us scared of fungi. Yep. <laughs> Um, so what should we poke some of them and see what happens? 
Well, each to their own angles, I suppose, but you know. You can always shoot something from a distance, can you? Mm. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll try that. I will take my trusty pistol and find a target. Have you got a crossbow without... instead? Has uh, anyone got no, a crossbow? Not, not anymore. Yeah. That no. was my last character. Yeah, that was Cray. His weapon of choice. Well, you shoot into the fungi. Um, yeah. I was going to target. I will about 10 meters away. That's yep. 30 feet or something. And chunks of uh, fungi splat, and nothing remarkable happens. Uh. It's perfectly safe. <laughs> See, I can shoot it. What can possibly go wrong? Um, I don't know if you can hear me, but the doctor will, will advise putting a cloth around our faces. They'll be soaking it with any alcohol we have or water. We, have we can't hear you. That. Yes, but we yes. did that already. We did soak with alcohol, so the doctor, I guess, is adding a little extra. Uh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, we use water. This in, this in my grog here and wrap this around your face. <laughs> we now have minus 10 on all our skills because we're, you know, drinking in the fumes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. I was kidding. We're not, we don't really need minus 10 on the skills. No, you won't get minus 10 on the skills. <laughs> it's minus 20. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Plus 50 on morale. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, you've gone crackly again, Mark. Mm -hmm. Whatever is moving. So is that a king in yellow? Looks like something from Versailles, I think. Yeah, it does. Decadence and elegance. <clears throat> um, and we don't have anyone to send out to test the path. No. But we do, but apparently we're not allowed to send them out to test the path because the <laughs> captain gets cranky about it. Yeah, yeah, she's not going to let you guys use Anjay as, as a tester. So she might we make have of them. Can we use the priest instead? The priest didn't come with you guys. Oh, mm -hmm. no. Uh, can I roll alchemy on anything here, the fungi? What are you going to do? Uh, Obviously handle some, right? I would like to handle some, yes. Right. And then use it with alchemical components to see if there's a reaction. <clears throat> Okay, what the um, what kind of reaction are you looking for? Uh, fumes, or maybe uh, uh, you know, uh, acid, or uh, perhaps a fire of some sort. You know, see if there's any reaction. Period at all. Uh, roll your alchemy. Yes. <laughs> I got a 68 out of 80, right? I mean, four Before I lie, yeah, you, you, your, your alchemy is oh. probably pretty high. Before I lie, my alchemy is 70. 70. So, okay, you hit a roll of d20. D20. I got a nine. nine. Get a nine. Um... The uh, at least this type of mushroom is very acidic, strong enough that you think it would go through metal. Hmm. If you had, you would have to. You would have to contain um, its juice. You'd have to squeeze it like a sponge to get juice out of it. Oh. And it would have to be in a glass container. Anything else? You're sure would eat through it. Obviously, it doesn't eat through rock, but um, wood or metal. 
you know it'd go through like like that so it would cause damage on the skin too so just the juices not actually handling the mushroom itself will cause problems yeah i mean if you're squeezing it you got to be careful like your gloves um got some holes in them now oh okay all right so i think we can uh just not squish them as long as we're not like stepping directly on them we'll be okay yep and that's um and they grow in groups and they have the red uh the red pulsating stripes in them uh yeah i will explain that to the group and they kind of they look like um um uh, like a loaf of bread and i'm trying to justify having a large jar made of glass in my kit right now so i could <clears throat> but you don't but i don't no <laughs> no but if you get a hold of a glass container you can fill it all i got in are those vials and i don't think uh, it's gonna work out <clears throat> So are we um, smart enough to, uh, to uh, Prince Hunter uh, taps uh, the, the witch hunter on the shoulder, the witch hunter. Hunter. and and is pointing to one of the narrow, the, clo the closest uh, narrow passageway that leads out of here. Uh -huh. um, and there is something crawling out of it that has caught his attention. I thought he was going to tell on me. I thought he was going to be like, that's, al <laughs> that's an alchemist right there. And okay, it, so what is crawling uh, out? Hold on, i got to tell you what this thing looks like. Ooh. If the doctor is close enough to Cuthbert, he'll give him a glass jar if he needs one. Yes, he does. I've got, I've got some in my equipment, so... Ooh. Oh my goodness, yes. Samples. All of them. All the samples. It looks like, except that the proportion is all wrong because it's really large, um, but like a starfish that you would see down at the beach except it's a lurid green and russet colored um, that has those five appendages coming off of it. That's what it's using to shuffle across the fungi floor, uh, complete with suckers. Uh, and there's these two eye stalks coming out of the top of its head. <clears throat> How big? Um, the size of a two-wheeled cart. Damn. Um, and it's and it's crawl. It crawled out. Now it stopped. And now one of its suckers' arms are up and moving a bit towards you guys then it comes down and it's coming towards you guys it's increased its speed over the ground what are you gonna do um have we got torches lit or lanterns the lanterns two lanterns uh i fire my pistol at it roll the hit That's a zero eight. No, zero three. Damn, that's a crit. And it's a D6 plus two. So is it double damage or roll twice? Um or how is it in this game? You uh I think it's just uh, max damage, isn't it? It's max damage. It's, it's a critical hit to max damage, but your bullet seems to um, just 
zip through one of its uh, appendages. Or no. Not. For once, I roll a critical damage. <laughs> so it's eight damage. Darn. It does a lot. It has less of effect than you would have hoped for with your nice direct shot. You seem to well, shoot it right in the center. Um, and your bullet just goes poof. Like a couple of fish or something? Hmm? Like, what's it? No, what they're called these um, slimy things in English. Slimy things in English. Yeah, you well, know, from the ocean, you can see through them, like a Portuguese man of war. Jellyfish. 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 Yes. Thank yeah, you. this is like a starfish, so it's not as it's not as translucent. It's a it's an opaque creature. Uh, so I mean, I you, you don't even more, see anything. more of the the damage is just pass through. It goes in, doesn't even pass through. It goes. Bloop. Um, you can still see the hole. There's a little leakage. Yellow fluid. Um, my recommendation is whole ass. <laughs> and it's heading right towards you now since you shot it. Um, what do you guys do? That's a good question. <laughs> I will ready my sword. Um, I want to throw a lit bottle of oil at it. And this should be fun because my ranged combat is only 35. You drop it on your feet. <laughs> it's a Call of Duty Shh. classic. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't do a very good job with that, so yeah, no. But Roll the hit. The side. Uh, that was a 60, so no. Okay. The... Um, lit flask of oil goes long because it's moving quicker than you expected so it got under it um and it had landed on uh some of the fungi so it's not doesn't break it hasn't lit up yet i guess you got a rag around it but anders um it's attacking you no uh, <sighs> I, I will try to. It's going to try to wrap you in a couple of its big starfish arms. What are you going yeah. to try to do? I will try to draw my short sword and chop it to pieces. Okay. So, uh, can I dodge or anything? Yeah, but it gets a, it's a 92, so you it misses its attack. You don't have to do anything. Um, I will retreat as it comes closer and draw my sword. It moves quickly. You can't just like take steps back. You got to. Do, <laughs> I mean, it either can, <laughs> or you can keep. I mean, it. I, I can keep you can do this, it, but moving it back. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I I fight it, but I try to move back a little. Okay, sure. Along the path. All right. Uh, so, uh, is it someone else or is it me? Um, you got the highest dexterity. I'll let you go first. Okay, uh, I will take my Asatot dice, and that's a solid miss. I okay. We'll go down the list. Uh, Silas, what would you like okay, to do? Fourteen. Got with, 14 for combat order. That's, oh, that's okay. I'm good. Yeah. So I, I think that's higher than probably. Cuthbert. I think Cuthbert's 13, so you can go. Right. Okay. Um, I'm just looking up shooting into melee. I can't see anything at the moment. Well, don't miss too badly. Right. We'll go with that. <laughs> Sorry, Anders. It's only a musket. It shouldn't do it too much damage if I don't, you know, catch him in time. <clears throat> uh, 31 with a 75 skill. So, yeah, 
that hits just fine. A musket awesome. does 2d8 right. plus one. Plus one, yep. Yeah, don't even bother to roll. You know that it, it, um, your bullet seems to, your gunfire seems to do minimal damage. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. <coughs> has it has it drawn the creature away from Anders? Um, no. Okay. It's still advancing on Anders. Um, Anjay, the prince, leaps at it and tries to hit it with his war club. And he is able to. Maria Trace Pistolas fires into it. Okay. And now it's, it's oozing yellow fluid out of it. In multiple places. <clears throat> I Cuthbert, have an idea. Yeah. You may, uh, and the doctor may make take some action. I shoot my rifle. I got a ten. Okay. Uh, and then my damage is Do minimal damage. I know what minimal damage is for a musket. Oh, you don't need no my damage. Yeah, you're just doing minimal with. Pistol fire or musket fire. Oh, yeah, rifle that fire. That would be okay. three with a musket, right? 2d8 plus yeah. one. So three. Okay. Probably going to do, do more damage if we club it with the damn things, but, you know. Okay, roll the hit. No, I missed. Sorry. Minus okay. 40, sorry. Let's see. It's continuing to go after Anders. Forty-nine, it misses. Good for me. Um, do do I have any chance to try to retreat from this thing? Yes. So I will try to do that. Uh, I have some stuff in my backpack that might be effective. Okay, you're booking out of the cavern to the other cavern. Yes. To its buddy, the other. Uh huh. And this thing is chasing Anders, uh, Silas. I'm I'm gonna hit it. Um. With my rifle, funnily enough. So yeah, this should be fun. And no, I don't. Although I didn't critical fail, which is nice. Yeah, you got a nut. You didn't get a hundred. No, fifty-two. 52, yeah. 45 okay. I wanted, so. Anjay is going to swipe at it with his club. He misses. Cuthbert? I am going to stay out of uh, melee combat and reload my gun. Doctor? Is the blood doing anything like the same the starfish is pursuing Anders. Is it, is it, you said it was leaking fluid? Is it just yeah, yellow fluid from all the multiple um, gunshot wounds <laughs> and cuts. And it, it's just dripping on the, the, the stone floor. It's not hissing or acting like an acid, is it? No, it doesn't make any noise. Uh, and and my stocks are intently focused on Anders, on uh, Wilhelm Tufel. I will step forward um, with my gloved hands, try and thrust my hand into one of the wounds. Make your unarmed uh, combat roll, or athletic, whichever you prefer. Combat. Ooh, we've got three such hands. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, Anders, it's going to get a, an attack on you as you uh, run into the next cavern. Yep. Carrying, I guess, carrying one of the light sources with you. Yes. 
I have this uh, idea because I do have a gunner's kit in my backpack, so I was thinking of pulling out the the powder and sprinkle it upon this this thing and try to set fire to the powder. You okay? You are brought up short from this procedure by seeing um, two suited dudes in front of you. Um, and they each got some, looks like a, uh, a type of pistol in their hand. Looks like a hand weapon. Um, uh, and they're pointing it, pointing it at you. Uh, are you saying they're dapper or they're in armor? They're in some, some dapper. type of work outfit, not dressed to the nines. <clears throat> Are they human? Um, the suit gives that comes with a uh, helmet. Their head is encased in a, in a circular helmet with a visor. Okay, and they're holding these weapons. Do they say anything or just threaten Paul Wilhelm? Yeah, they're not saying anything, um, and uh, beams strike uh, forth from their hand weapons, and uh, and they're white. Um, and suddenly the cavern has a smell of fresh rain, and these beams go striking right by you. You're thinking, oh, this is it. You're going to get take two in the chest. Um and impact the uh, the starfish creature um, and carve two, carve two nasty gashes in it. And the thing gives a squeal and collapses and leaks out a bunch of yellow fluid. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do leak some not yellow fluid as well. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while. <laughs> I got that one. I got that one. Um, and uh, out, and they, uh, one of them says, um, and it's coming across in a crackly, static, pop and whiz voice of uh, 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 cease and desist with discharging your firearms. Um, okay. Yep. <laughs> uh, please state your purpose. So, uh, <coughs> I'm alone with these guys, right? Well, everyone can see them. I mean, you're, you got a lantern. Have they it's seen the, the rest teams. of the... Everyone in the, the party can see what just transpired. Okay, and they have seen the others as well. Yeah. Darn. Um, sorry, Mark. Do Wilhelm Tuffle has never met Clayman Morrow. Guys look similarly dressed. These are similarly dressed suits. To um, uh, they remind you, Doctor Norton, a bit of the Paladins of the Fall. Okay. In their outfit, the 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 voice is coming out of the helmet. The voice coming out of the helmet that has a distinctive. That's what reminds you the most. Does Does Silas recognize them at all? Nope. Nope. Okay. Yeah, what are we doing here, actually? <clears throat> I say uh, I had a divine oh. vision. <laughs> Real quick, Anders, just so you know, we are looking for resources to fix the ship. Yeah, I won't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, 
Can you, if you could get closer to your microphone, Mark. Sorry. Uh, I'll ask them, are they from Clay and Moran? And if they're from the Um, your, uh, they don't acknowledge you. They, your, um, um, your Arcana contamination requires, um, a further study. Will you submit? And they're, and he's addressing you all. It's apparent because the um, volume all of a sudden goes up real quick. Uh, is it possible to hide behind the group right now if I did a uh, stealth roll? <laughs> you are going to try to slip away unnoticed. Yes. Um, where are you? Where are you? Where would you like to go? I would end up going deeper into the cave. Uh, you know, we we were heading towards. Uh, basically, we went backwards now, right? Yep. Meet these yeah, you're going guys. around in a big circle. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to try to hide uh, on the other side of the circle. And um, but there's there was also this this uh, I guess second cavern that you're in. There is uh, three separate passageways leading out. One's back in the back section. So there and there's and then there's one that that starfish creature came out of. Uh, can I make it to the back section? One. Roll your stealth. My stealth is fifty, and I'm rolling a thirty-seven. Okay. Uh, the uh, the spokesperson of the duo continues talking as if not aware that Cuthbert is sneaking away. Um. And repeats his question, your arcana contamination requires further investigation. Will you submit? Um, do we have any choice? You? <laughs> um, Probably not. <clears throat> if uh, liquidation can be considered a choice. That's not an option. Please continue with your uh, pr proceedings. You nearly said <laughs> probing then, didn't you? You nearly <laughs> said probing. No probing. <laughs> <laughs> so the second one that hasn't spoken uh, steps up, uh, pulls out uh, a box, a <laughs> hip, and it has some attached little rod to it. And it's making noise. And he's just walking around all you guys and scanning you all. Um, and, uh, and then they, uh, the one that's been speaking says, uh, please wait while we upload. Um, uh, Then uh, uh, next thing he says is uh, uh, the the master would like to uh, would like to interact. Would you please uh, follow us? Sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> and you go. Back into that huge cave where the skeletons were. You uh, cross that cavern, go into the a narrower one. Following them, you pass a room with, I think, a pool, a shimmering pool. Yeah, it just looks like dark water. But you pass the fool. 
go around a narrow passageway opened up into a smaller cave not as large as the ones that you've been in um and instead of fungi there's uh the the cave is covered in uh, a white flower with broad green leaves um the floor is really wet and part of the wall where there is no flowers growing is it kind of looks like a twisted stump growing out of the wall um like a tree stump or yeah like a gnarled tree stump like something had grown out of the wall it's gray as if it was a tree but like cleanly sliced on the top and it and it's and it has some human like features like there may be a face and that is quickly confirmed when like eyes open up and it's their yellow glowing orbs. Um, and, um, and it takes on the appearance of that hologram you saw in the desert, the facial features. Do I remember? I remember this. Yeah. That was the sandstorm. Yep. Yeah. Or the light storm. I call it a sandstorm. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, we'll help you up. And welcome to the and it's um I am Hayon Dor, master of this domicile and uh what come ye what come with you with um with such um i guess art arcana um contamination and um dr norton you recognize this face as uh one of claim and morrow <clears throat> okay, um, I will greet it politely and say that we are here um, to look for supplies for our ship and that we have already met in the desert. Ah, so you triggered one of my uh, trans arcana buoys. Uh, yes. I have no idea what he's speaking about. It, was, mind, it, was, a warning. it was a team. warning buoy. It was a warning buoy, but still you came. Uh, I took it as an invitation. Um, well, there is an 83% chance probability that, um, you folks are exactly what I need. I just answer with a slight bow. <laughs> um, how so? Well, if uh, the probability engine is correct, which it always is, um, it's time to move against the uh, lunar beasts 
and disrupt their plans. The lunar bees? Beasts. Beasts. Of course. What are they? <laughs> <coughs> well, with 95% pro certainty, probability, um, you folks should contain the complement of skills required to complete the plan. And what is in it for us? And then uh, I wish the doctor was present. I wish you could get involved <laughs> in this conversation. But at least Maria Trace Pistola's um, starts yelling at the uh, the face in the that's talking to you and going and yelling, "What have you got me into this time, Morrow? This wasn't the deal." And then the the talking stump, <laughs> I call it talking stump, uh, goes uh, probability uh, group identity now a hundred percent. Uh, establishing relevant probability timeline. Um, so here is the list of needed equipment and starts, and then there another a hologram projection of a list starts scrolling, and then it goes through a bunch of stuff, and then it stops. Was there anything on that to fix the ship? Yep, it's glowing and it says um, Accuum canister um, ignition switch. <clears throat> this, this is a location of uh, material to repair the Nago Pace. Also, we'll need um, a vehicle, additional vehicle for the for the mission, and it can be found here, as well as possibly advanced medical supplies to um, um, cure or prevent uh, the effects of. Uh, Arcana contamination and uh, acumen poisoning that you'll experience on the surface of the moon. Okay. Your levels are currently quite high. That's Do not weird. recommend uh, walking on the surface without protective gear. <clears throat> um. I think we'll take that. Uh, the doctor and Wilhelm Tuffel um, require further examination. <laughs> Cuthbert, what are you doing? Uh, hopefully, I would be able to sneak uh, close enough to the group just to hear them, but not to see. I don't need to hear uh, what they're actually saying. Just know that they're there. You know, just know they're around the corner or know they're further down the tunnel. Um, you know you lost their general direction where they are because... You are now at a three-way three, three -way intersection of Y, and you're not sure which way to go. Oh, well, then I am going to do what you should do if you're lost. I'm going to stay put. Okay. Roll a D8. Tell me what you get. Oh, I don't like this. <laughs> 
What do you hear breathing in the dark? Myself. <clears throat> um, a plant growing out of the uh, fungi along the cave wall. Is breathing? Well, it's a smooth brown plant. You would give it no much notice except that all of a sudden its leaves open up and it's got five eyes and it's looking right at you. Oh. Um, oh, roll your perception. Otherwise, you're surprised. Uh, my perception is 41. I roll a 64. Okay, you are surprised. And you are quickly wrapped up in brown vines. Um, okay, let's, um, what's your strength? Uh, nine. Okay, so that's right. You're a 45, and this thing is a 70. So this is contested strength roll. Oh. The way that works is um, unless it's a critical, it's the highest success succeeds. So if you rolled your, say you rolled your, your limit, you rolled a 45, yeah. you succeeded your strength contested, but the plant can still beat you because it can get a higher number and still succeed. Okay. So that's how we're doing that. So I'm rolling die right now? Yep, you're rolling percent all die. See if you can resist being grasped. He got a 99, so he failed. He oh. may be able to spring free from this deadly trap. I got a 24. You spring free from this deadly trap before it, the vines totally enwrap you and immobilize you when you fall backwards on your butt into some squishy fungi. Okay. Just out of reach, it seems, of the pliant, inanimated plant, smooth brown vine. So is my ass burning now? <laughs> um... 1d6, you, and on one, you hit the uh, the, uh, the acidic fungi. Six. No. You don't know what that fungi does. Good. Great. But it's not the, it's not the acid ass-burning fungi. <laughs> uh, I would like to move uh, far enough away I feel safe from the vines. Um, past it or back the way you came? Back the way I came. Back the way you came. Back the way you came. Okay, you can either go left or right. Left. You come to um, a large cavern with a silent pool of water. Oh, dominating the majority of it. You would have to walk to your right side to get around it. Uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to stay here. Okay. And shortly sitting there, you hear the voices of your companions talking to somebody through a passageway that leads out of this room. One of the passageways. I'm not going to move. Okay. Dr. Norton, are you able to participate in the discussion? Can you chat in the chat? Are you aware that this looks like Clayman Morrow and Maria Trace Pistolas 
is called this manifestation morrow. No, sorry, everybody's breaking up a bit, a bit robotic, sorry. The construct talking out of the wall looks like Clayton and Morrow. It calls itself Hey on Door. And Maria Trace Pistolis is yelling at it and identifying it as Morrow, Clayton and Morrow as well, and seems rather relatively pissed and wants to know what he's got her involved in. And I guess Clayman Morrow's presented a list of equipment you're going to go need to retrieve to complete a mission that he wants to assign you all. Okay. Nope, we'll start to work, I guess. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's up to you to drive it. Just wanted to access some of uh, um, Dr. Norton's previous experience. But his vocal situation doesn't seem to be working. Yeah. Might be better off just writing it down, Mark. But um, who? I mean, I've, I've obviously missed a few bits with this. Who? Who is this? This claim? Anyway. Clayman Morrow was encountered early in the game. In the when you first entered the realm of the guild, you guys got attacked by rabbit men. Yeah. And, no. got, and he was a prisoner, or he was he was there as well. He offered you guys a job. Yeah, to go and kill somebody, there. didn't it? Yeah. And then the second time you guys ran into him was on the island of the pale lady in front of her palace. palace. Yeah, that's right. The guy at the bridge or something. Yep. And he wanted you guys to go in and put the devices on. He was trying to close what he called the trans arcana penetration by the pale lady into Earth's realm. And um, and he was gone when you guys completed that mission. So this is your third encounter with him. But now he's not a person like you've met. He seems to be some type of construct thrown into the wall. Yeah, I have never met him, so I have no idea. Mark, your vocals are kind of scratching and... Unfortunately, making too much noise. But, um, yeah, he wants to do, uh, he would like to have his assistance do a, a further examination of Wilhelm and the doctor. Further. <clears throat> Meaning. Now you sound like Barney. Yeah. Um, well, they have other equipment. You have um, um, something else going on besides acumen poisoning and and uh, the the the, Ar the arcana contamination that you've experienced uh, has some anomalies that need to be checked out further before they're understood. <clears throat> You'd have to accompany uh, his two um, uh, agente assistants um, to the lab. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. The um, uh, 
um, the examination reveals that uh, you have um, what he calls uh, a, a retrieval attachment. And he believes it will be it's it would be triggered by um, by the target of the mission. I'm not sure whether it activates upon touching or just being in proximity of the target. So what does that mean? It would transport you and the target. Um, and at this point, he's not sure what where the destination would be. Um, uh, probability engine prediction, 97% chance uh, the, the activating target is also the target of his mission. And then puts up on the screen um, subject uh, um, subject catalyst, and it seems to be a readout. And there's a image of a guy. And if the doctor was present, he would know that that would be Constine Malabench. I haven't met Malabench, right? No, but the doctor no. has, and yeah. he's part of this examination. Because he's suffering the same thing as um, as you are in a different form. Um, this one, the doctor's contamination seems to be a petrifying agent that, um, after a certain time, elapses. If uh, he hasn't made contact with the target, um, he will, in fact, crystallize and petrify. Uh, we don't want that to happen. <clears throat> so is this all the stuff that uh, Malabenchi's dad's done to you then? Yeah, with the coins, right? Hmm. Oh, sorry, I mean, I'm talking out of character here because obviously silence. Yeah, but no, that's all right. But yeah, it... it... <coughs> In, uh, in which lore terms, it seems like the construct is saying that you and the doctor have been hexed, have been cursed. And all this scientific jargon. And what do we need to unhex us? What do um, we do? We can e you can either retrieve... Um, some advanced medical supplies that can be found available in the surrounding wastelands in um, in old Ahente bunkers. Or um, um, find your target and acquire the target. Which is Melon Bench. Yep. And that um, that is very difficult to do. <laughs> Would activate or should uh, deactivate the curse, but um, part of it is um, the the activation is going to is going to transport uh, you and Malabench. And he's not, and he's not sure where. So I think we should go for the medical supplies. Um. So, uh, I think I Mara wants to get his hands on Malbench as well. Um, if the probability engine is correct, it means that Malbench is in the clutches of the lunar beasts. And as hey on door he's expected to um arrive at alternate bendel dolum 
and complete the ritual that will open up a gate between uh, um, the dark side of the moon and Earth. To be able to return. Or? Oh, the moon beast a, a plan on using it as a passageway to Earth. I see. They are um, always in the in the in the search for um, food and labor. And they're going to use Constine Malbec and uh, um, he's been uh, Clayman Morrow has been stuck here for the last 235 years waiting for the unfolding of events to line up. <clears throat> that the lunar beasts uh, believe him to be Hayon Dor, a Hyperborean sorcerer that can complete the ritual for him to open him passage. So if we want to go after Melon Bench at this point, what should we do? And do they have any stuff or gear that could assist us? You were talking about the vehicle. Yeah. And the parts for the ship. Mm hmm Yep. With the multitude of probabilities and timelines being reduced to this one, um, it spits out the plan. And that comes up on another screen. And the plan consists of uh, taking the vehicle and arriving at alternate Bendel Dullum, where the lunar beasts are expecting the ceremony to be to complete, um, drop in, snatch Malabench, and use the vehicle to escape quickly and return to, uh, to his lab where he can... Um, Neutralize Malbench. And how many can travel on this vehicle? Um, six. So what do you guys say? Uh, so, are we privy to the risk, this particular conversation now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's privy. <clears throat> okay. Cards on the table. Seems this Clayman Morrow construct has tried to orchestrate events so that he has a crack team of commandos at his disposal to neutralize a target. It, um, the, uh, the hit job he had in mind when he encountered you in the in the pale realm uh, in the pale lady's realm was this uh hey on door that he's been impersonating for the last 235 years oh so this guy's still alive then somewhere is he no no he oh, he, he has actually he did, right, no, fair enough yeah but um since he had to do it himself the uh um there was some miscues, and so he's been stuck here for the last 235 years. Um, keeping the, making the lunar beast believe hey on door is still there and available to do the ritual. And the lunar beast are an ancient race, not very smart, but incredibly patient as their schemes and plans have been unfolding for the last 235 years. I say we do it. Do, do we have to bring this, this Malabench guy back or can we uh, deal with him, you know, by way of a, a, a high velocity bullet through the brain when we get there? Um, not a problem. A high velocity bullet through the brain is fine, but he's quite sure that Wilhelm and the doctor will die. Okay, that's fine. I don't really know them very well. Um, 
That's so. a very, very, very sucky plan. <laughs> <clears throat> That's the uh, the curse that's been put on. Um, they're tied to Constine's fate. Right. So does that mean that as soon as one of them touches him, they're going to get teleported away then? Yes. So that's why on the equipment list has been added a um, Arcana dampener. Right. That they'll have to, when they find attached to their belts, that will hopefully uh, disrupt that. I'm worried about the hopefully thing there. Yeah. <laughs> he gives it a, uh, depending on the condition of the device, 78% chance of success. Okay. Oh, and by the way, he says um, Clayman Morrow had uh, um, passed away about 100 years ago, and this is the collected sum total of his memory and knowledge and just a construct. Fair enough. Do we get some of those snazzy guns? Yes, yes. Uh, recommend the, uh, the Agente um, O2 beam rifle. Unfortunately, here in his facility, he only has um, pistols. But uh, they are effective against uh, Shugoth, Migo, and Spawn of Shub Niggerath. Cool. Not if we meet them, it's not, but okay. <laughs> okay. Though it's also known that the, the O2 beam weapon is only half effective against blue men. Against what? Sorry, moon? Blue, blue. men. Oh, blue men. Okay. Past protocol recommends combination um, um, incendiary grenades and O2 beam weapons. The O2 beam weapons not only harm these creatures, but also will increase the blaze of any incendiary devices. So a combination of beam weapons and fan flames seem to be most effective. Okay. Don't have and to be what flamethrowers, do we? Yeah. And those grenades, <laughs> are they available as well? Have to get those in the in this location. Okay. So basically we are going away to some old bunker to retrieve weapons and gear and, and a vehicle uh, and a vehicle and a vehicle mm -hmm. they'll be exp yeah there's an appropriate vehicle that has um uh, flight capability armaments that will be necessary for the completion of the mission <clears throat> do we need suits or anything for going out into the uh onto the surface or Yes. Right. And those are here. Those are here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've just rolled a four on my perception test. So um, uh, having now noticed that the dodgy chemist is not here, um, not quite sure what to do about that because he's a dodgy chemist from my character's point of view. Uh huh. <laughs> no, I'm a. I. I don't. I didn't expect him to sneak off without any of you guys noticing. Ah. So you. You know. But you know. What are you going to do in that situation? You're going to rat out your your buddy trying to oh, you know, I don't even know the guy just... while you're getting arrested now right <clears throat> yeah all right well I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna nudge wilhelm and say where's the dodgy chemist gone and i'll and leave it from there <clears throat> yeah i also noticed where is he <laughs> are you gonna, make... <laughs> are you gonna, are you gonna bring that up <coughs> so, we're not ratting the, uh, you die, it, the, you're talking to it identifies itself as the Moro AI you're talking to the Moro AI <coughs> uh, 
<clears throat> and his two assistants are um, Nix and Naga. Nix and Naga. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. They are a hente, a space alien race that used to um, uh, occupy and wage war on this planet. Okay. And then across the universe against forces such as the Pale Lady, predominantly the Pale Lady. Okay. So I guess we uh, gear up and get this show on the road. Yeah, works for me. So you're provided with spacesuits. They got the helmet and a visor. Um, the uh, the surface is dangerous. Uh, the acuum storms are the worst. Looks like you guys got hit with that. One of those. Uh, try not to get any more exposure than you can to uh, the surface environment without protection. Okay. Or you can become very ill. Uh, so actually the, the trek to the location is recommended on foot would be the, would guarantee greater chance of 15% greater chance of success. 15? <laughs> Percent greater chance of success. <laughs> um, and right. uh, yet the course is laid out as uh, from where you are, follow the edge. The, uh, the crevasse is at the edge of this desert that you've been crossing. He says to the north is the, the to the north and west is the blighted lands. Uh, best trail is going to be follow the edge of the desert along the along the blighted lands south going, heading southwest um until you come to the uh obsidian statue and then head due south back into the desert a bit and you'll find the uh the bunker poking out of the sand the local yellow men savages call it the uh, spire to the gods because it's really shiny. Okay. Okay. <coughs> and Watch. how how far is this? Um I mean, is it one day of walk? It's uh yeah, it's less oh. than one day. Less than one day. Um It's like two miles to the statue and then three miles back into the desert to the alien outpost. Okay. Um, so we get a spacesuit here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what about the guns, grenades, and arcana dampeners? Uh, that you got to get at the alien outpost. Here all he has is pistols, O2 beam pistols. Um, yeah, What's the stats on those? The stats on those are they do 1d6 points of damage. Uh, they have a range of 300 feet. And they each have 36 charges. And he's got four of them. <clears throat> and they shoot, and it shoots a beam. <whistles> and whenever it shoots, it's a white beam, and it smells like fresh rain. Awesome. Okay. But uh, rifles and grenades and dampeners, you're gonna have to find that in the uh, in the bunker in the outpost. So you said one d six damage. 
<laughs> and range 300 meters. Feet. Feet, it's about 100 meters. 100 meters. Ish. But it's three foot three to a meter, so you want to do the math on that. You you feel free, Anders. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm using three foot three to the meter. It's good enough. And you said 36 shots. Yep, and it shoots in a line shaped beam, which uh, uh, eliminates uh, any range penalties. Oh, that's good. Okay. Is you can kind of paint your target. Cool. Sorry, very noisy telly behind me. Uh, Cuthbert? Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, I'm, I'm going to wait till they come find me. Because they're, I, I can hear them, so I know they're alive. Yeah, right? yeah, they're really close. Then uh, my character is not safe enough to just wait. I I'm guess eventually you're well. going to see them. Um... Get uh, come walking through this this room in their spacesuits. In they're in spacesuits. Mm -hmm. uh, we look pretty cool. I, yeah, I didn't know you guys were wearing them. <laughs> do I do I see your faces? Not through the visors. You can tell it's us because because si Silas has still got his little woolen cap on his head. Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, I he, he keeps, keeps, occasionally keeps trying to poke his pipe through the visor, and he's getting annoyed because he can't suck on his pipe. But yeah. uh, you can drill a hole. <laughs> uh, I I guess I will show myself and have an incredulous look on my face, and ask what you are doing, as if you're crazy. Well, we're not getting poisoned for a start, so we're good. <clears throat> So we make a perception roll, so we realize it's going to be him and not the team. You know. No, you don't have to do that. No, it's a shame. <laughs> um, but one of the assistants asks if you'd like a suit. No, no, I don't. You don't? Will you be staying then? Oh. I, I, my character doesn't even know what's going on. He just thinks you guys went insane <laughs> or joined a cult. Both. Um, we're off to get some more guns and things that go boom. Uh, so, does my character have to wear a suit to continue forward? No, no, it's just not recommended that uh, you can be exposed to achium poisoning on the surface without protection. Okay, and. Does my character but while you're what but while you're below ground in the facilities such as this, um, you'll be fine. Does my Maria Trace Pistola starts being concerned about her crew? Uh, is what what do, did did they change their mission? Is their mission different now than the one that you overheard being talked about? Uh, is uh, so are they still in line with what Zeal wants to happen? You gotta ask them, guys. Talk to each other. I think so. We're still killing now and then, right? Oh god, yeah, oh, but not straight okay. away. Of course. No. Of course. Yeah. Oh. Apparently, right. we've got to bring him, bring him back first, and then kill him afterwards. So, yeah. Unless you don't like, and and Wilhelm anymore, in which case we can kill him when we find him. Uh, yeah, very, uh, very like a, a pouty twelve-year-old. Uh, he will reluctantly uh, put a suit on and follow you guys. Okay. So we're heading out of the crevasse into the out of the fungi gardens and into the blighted lands. Oh. 
always an awesome place for a random encounter. I guess I did get one random encounter so far. I can't be bitter. Or can I? On the plains of the blighted lands, you see a bare human skeleton that has been turned into an unknown black stone. Which would seem to indicate the location where you would then proceed south into the desert for about three miles to reach the bunker. So we do that. Yeah, okay. Do we see NJ and NJ and Maria Trace Pistolas are um, heading back to the ship to get their crew and bring them back to the fungi gardens. So it's okay. just us. Because they are going to they're going to continue being exposed to poisoning on the surface on the Nago Pace. <clears throat> without suits so i guess she's gathering what suits she can or deciding to bring some back all right well it's just the three of us then Dave. yep yep just oh, it, it, now. are we gonna send the doctor back with them or is he coming with us no i'm imagining the doctor is part of this group that his problem today is just a temporary one. Oh yeah yeah, yeah. that's fair enough and nobody no. mentioned the word magic. Uh, this is obviously a pocket watch clockwork suit or something. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely. I'll be taking the blueprints for me when I go. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's a protective suit with a helmet. It's pretty fancy. And you got the laser beam. Mm. You got the laser beam pistol. Yeah, that's obviously clockwork. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yes. Clockwork lasers. It's advanced yeah. clockwork. I've never seen it before, but it's still clockwork. It's a beam of oxygen. Nice. The O2 beam weapons, oxygen guns. So when we run out, we can just stick it in our mouths and pull the trigger. Yeah. Yes, you <laughs> first. <laughs> <clears throat> no, they, they have power cells. They need to be charged. Because the power cells are made of clockwork. Yes. <laughs> well, they're sealed up. It's recommended that you don't try to open one. No, cheese. Where okay. do you wind this thing? <laughs> yeah. You need a machine to wind it, obviously, that we don't have. And so we should never touch these power cells. Yeah. We should not Good investigate idea. them in any way. I'll try my best. Right. We're going south, then, aren't we? <clears throat> <clears throat> and. It's easy to pick out what the yellow men refer to as the spire of God. Um, it's this silver looking tower. Uh, kind of looks like a bird's wing stood on end. When which, asked which God, what's the response? Um, inconsequential. Oh, we, we agree. Nati okay. uh, native, native superstitions um, are varied and not science-based. Wonderful. Now you know. Um, there's also smoke rising from it and it's not until you get closer that you see that this uh that this spire is on top of a square block looking structure poking out of the sand and there is right where the spire meets the top of this structure is um a rent hole where it appears that there's some 
vehicle slammed it, slammed into the side of it, busted into it, and it's smoking, trailing smoke up from its wreckage. <clears throat> so quite recently, then, um, what kind of vehicle are we talking about? A f flying boat or? Uh, you would have to climb up and go look at the hole. You'd have to get a closer look. Uh, are there by any chance any doors uh, or openings on this base structure? No, not that you can see. It's smooth all around of this silvery metal, very reflective. Even without a sun, the uh, the strain, the burning stars and um, kaleidoscope of aurora borealis covers that colors that streak through the sky and the looming planet that is always shining down all reflect off of this structure. Hmm. So how to get up there? Um, well, ten why don't, feet why high. Have a look around the base first. If we see yeah. if we can find anything around the base. You just I just assumed you just did. It's okay, smooth for all around. All yeah, right. one one side the sand is up, so there's only like two feet to get to the top. On the other side of the, you know, uh, leeward or windward or whatever, if there's twelve feet by the back where sand piles up, you could actually just walk up on top of it. And we do that. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. <clears throat> and we take a look at the vehicle, the busted vehicle. Um, it looks like the size of a wagon, a four-wheeled wagon, but it's an enclosed metal tube with a cockpit. Um, and it, and it has crashed into the Eastern wall at an angle. It's smoking wreckage. Um, what else? There's a there's a large circular door in the south wall. There is what appears to be an open archway hanging in thin air, twenty feet up. It has a narrow ledge, but otherwise. It appears to hang in space. Um, yeah. As I uh, take in the scene and investigate the the vehicle and the crash, I notice that there are no uh, marks of hooves. Very strange. Mm -hmm. Does it look like this this object has come through the archway? No, the archway is within this room. Okay. In the center of the room, the room is square, maybe a rectangle. Um, and this in this twenty foot archway. is hanging in the air the total uh height to the ceiling is about 40 feet and you imagine that spire that that you know you're at the base of the spire but there is a there is a ceiling you're not um, looking up at a hollow spire Mm -hmm. um, the vehicle has it smashed 
through the wall or is it like smashed against the wall? It's smashed through the wall. This is okay. providing entrance into this spire. Sorry. Sorry. If I look into the cockpit, does it look suited for human beings? Like yeah. A pi pilot's chair and something like that. Yeah, but it's empty. A driver's seat. Yes, yep. It can fit fit four. Mm -hmm. It's actually an open cockpit. It's not enclosed. It's it's okay. all very strange. The so rear of it work. the rear of it has um a projection like you like one of the uh uh projections on the bottom of Maria Trace Pistola's ship, the Nago Pace. Do we recognize that as what it is? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> but those things we haven't seen any place else than in Dreamlands, right? No, no. Hmm. Any so, any sign uh, of the occupants anywhere? Like, you know, splattered across a wall further down. No. Okay. So doorway or, or archway, what are we doing? Or a hole in the wall. A uh, hole in the wall. Yeah, I, I vote for the hole as well. Okay. What is the what is the uh the consensus, gentlemen. Sorry, I missed that. We're so going to hole. The archway. The hole. The <clears throat> the hole made by the vehicle. But that's where it's coming. It's coming from there. That's just the outside, isn't it? Oh, it smashed through the wall and slid into the room. Okay, yeah. so we're we're inside the room now. Yeah, I thought yeah. I thought that we were outside the spire and no, no, no. To look in the cockpit and everything, you walked in. Okay, so we're inside the room. Yeah, uh, you know, gaping hole that was obviously rent from this thing, yeah. plunging into it and sliding into the room. Okay, oh, uh, yeah. and it's a, and it's kind of a wreck, but you can tell I had an open four seater cockpit. Um, blah blah blah. I think. Where what what you guys say? Well, that, is it? A, I've got down. There should be a door in the south wall, and then there's an archway just in midair with some steps up to it. There's no steps to it. Oh, there's no steps to it. So there's just yeah. an archway in the middle of nowhere, basically yep. in the room. Floating. Yeah. Um, at a certain angle, when you look at it from one side, it looks black. When you look at it the other side, uh, it appears that you're you're looking into a forested space. Okay. How the high off the ground is he? Sorry. Gentlemen, hold on for a second. I'll be right back with you. I vote for the circular door. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, we've got to try and get to the archway. I'm not quite sure how high off the ground it was. I didn't catch that. I, think I know it's, it's a, rather big. It's feet up or something. I thought Jay, Jay said, said that as well, but it, then he, he said something about it being 20 foot wide. Yeah, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> Very confusing. I think it's meant to be confusing. <laughs> yeah. This is where I could do a roll 20 with like the fog of wall. So you slowly reveal everything as you move through the blinking map. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I just played using that twice, I think, or three times maybe. Um, I was I was DMing, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it, it's it's a lot better when you're DMing it. You can just slowly reveal everything. It's quite nice. It's a co conversion of um, the olden Halla contract, funnily enough, to D and D. Yeah. Mm. What have I used for D and D in this game? Oh, I didn't get a chance. 
you guys um you guys that's right i allow player agency which means when you guys go in a direction that doesn't include something i don't quantum ogre you guys it's cool it's always nice not to be railroaded we do appreciate that because <laughs> uh -huh. i remember what uh what cuthbert's character zach way back when you asked you know what would happen if we followed clayman morrow to do the hit job yeah you still don't know because <laughs> your refusal changed the probability so until he knew your answer, he didn't know what his target was going to be. Oh, I thought we agreed, and then we just didn't do it. <laughs> well, that's what's happening now. But I'm saying when you first met, I had a completely different scenario. For that. Oh, I thought uh, I thought the uh, rest of the group was all like, "Yeah, sure, let's do that," and then my character went off and had sex. <laughs> that's what I thought happened. No, they said no. We're not all interested, right. and then all he right. went and had sex. Yeah. Does he still curse the day that he ever met William Oswald Sissel? We'll have to, maybe there'll be time to come to that. But right now, it's not the place for that conversation. No. Let's get the guns and bombs first, then we can reminisce. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what, what you guys were going to do? Right. How high off the ground is this archway? Uh, 20 feet. So, right. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it is 20 feet up. Right, that's fine. Mm -hmm. So, I guess it's <coughs> the circular door then. The circular door uh, does not appear to have a handle. It's metal. It's circular. There isn't any wheel or lever that you can see. Um, if we try to push it, solid, unyielding. If we I kick it, <laughs> do we have any devices on our suits like a? Uh, readout display or anything like that that starts blinking as we approach the door nope nope um okay so i start looking around the room if is there anything in the room that we could maybe use No. The room's really plain. No levers or buttons or anything in the walls or floor. No. No. Hmm. I mean, there's, there's indents designs that elude you artificial manufactured are there any symbols that we recognize no um could i make a mechanical philosophy check yeah i imagine it's going to be on the door yeah 85. No, that's a fail. So never mind. <coughs> yep. What type of key would unlock this door? You would not. You are not sure. Right. Do we still have the key? Did we get a key? We had a key that uh, 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 we used on a door. It was more of an amulet that was a key. Used it on a door. It fell to the ground, and I picked it up, and that's the last I remember of it. Yeah, yeah, it was that uh, that green there. made out of green stone. Yeah, and it had the symbol of shoving nigger off on it. Yeah, the 
the cloven hooves and the tentacles. Yeah, what happened to that? Do we still have that? Yeah, you guys still have that. Uh, I would like to, like, you know, slam it against the door a few times. Nothing happens. Oh, okay. I tried, guys. Yeah. Definitely a dodgy chemist. Yes, yes. That's so right. <clears throat> the the portal thing suspended in the air. Um, I go around beneath it and see if there's maybe like an invisible stairway or something like that. No, no, no. As incredible as it seems, it is floating in air. I'm, I'm going to shoot the other door with the beam gun. Uh, the beam sprays harmlessly across the door. Fair enough. Knock off a charge. Yep, knock off a charge. Um, so this only leads one other direction to go. Mm hmm. It appears so. Uh, yeah, so I, I say we, we have to go the other way. How are you going to get up 20 feet in the air? Uh, we had a grappling hook at one point, but we lost it. So that's out of the question. Uh, we, we, we've got enough rope. We've just got nothing to actually secure it to on the other side. Um, there's chunks of metal from the ship laying around. Um, there's debris. There's we have, we have a whole ship we can work with, don't we? Mm. Yeah. Can we uh, use a ship to make a uh, ramp to get up there? Yeah, you guys can fashion a ladder out of. Equipment. You got a mechanical preacher, you got scraps. Oh, yeah, you're a mechanical preacher. Cool. You hate me. You got, <laughs> well, he's a mechanical preacher from Bill from Bill Athleen. Not from Earth. No. Oh. I don't like you very much. You're a dodgy chemist, but you know he's, you're, a, you're he's, a, he's a native of the dream worlds. Well, it's just you know I have to hide from the witch hunter. I have to hide from the uh, the religious uh, doctor. So <clears throat> it's just nice to have a guy I don't really need to hide from. <laughs> <laughs> so you must have liked the uh, the. The Morrow AI's uh, prognosis on uh, what would happen to the witch doctor and yes, yes, <laughs> the good doctor that <laughs> that's why I asked. Goes down, Constantine goes down, they go down too. I asked specifically every. I, I know everything. Yes, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. You weren't there. Do you know that? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, well, they they said they told me. Well, it's yeah, eventually it's gonna, so. uh, this is it's common knowledge that uh, the death of Constine may cause the death of good Dr. Norton and Bill Helm as well. So, he so should obviously, have as party members, you get all weigh the relevance of that to your decisions. Just out of character, how, how many how many characters would that be for you then, Anders? Sorry. How He's many already... characters would that be? You're on. What, what are you on now? Your third. Yes. Yeah, both, both Zach and Anders are on their third character. Yes. They've both experienced two character deaths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What happens when you regularly play there, Kevin? Characters get what? Character. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. And, yeah. and you do stupid stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you do stupid things, yes. Yeah, I like, I like you. I, you think you died for doing something stupid? All you did was look at a hole. You were just yes. like, I'm going to look at this hole. <laughs> I don't think that was a stupid thing. That's all I'm saying. I'm Ken, sorry. You, my, I, I think even the hole even had a sign that said, look here. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's the old green devil face again, isn't it? And uh, we still don't know where he went. Well, Anders knows where he went. Yes, I know. I won't tell you. <coughs> right so, there, what we do? We're making the ladder. Yep. Yes. And that brings us yeah. to the 8.30 mark. Yep. Uh, so a good a place as any to okay. just suspend the game unless anyone has any questions, bookkeeping, current concerns. Uh, the next scheduled game would be two weeks from now. Uh, what do we see when we peek our head over and give us something very well, you obvious? You can actually see hanger. on the floor. Cliffhanger, go. Um, it looks like a forested area. That has you can actually from your spider. angle looking down up, you can see blue sky. Cool. Oh. Okay. So would it be a forest or more like a rainforest or jungle? Uh more like an overgrown garden. Uh, okay. Uh -huh. So tall plants, tall green plants with flowering buds. Are they plants that the people not from this area might recognize? You have not seen any plant. This is the first time you've seen plants since you landed on the dark side of the moon. Except, I guess, the fungi. And the plant that tried to eat Cuthbert. There wasn't a very good plant, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was contested strength. If he failed that, he would have been fucked. You've been rolling up character number four. I would have liked the idea that, you know, you just leave it as, okay, you failed your strength test, you know, you, you fail. And then later you introduce my character back in by being the, the corpse on the wall. <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, that would have been that would have been awesome. But you 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 passed, so I can't kill you. So I, I already have this concept of a new character thought out, so <laughs> I always say that. Dude. Always like, oh, I'm working on that. <laughs> you don't know how this is going to end. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's clockwork and Cthulhu. Everybody dies. It's just a question of when. Yes. Next time in two weeks. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks. Cool. So, okay. Thank you. See you later. Take care.